Hello everyone and welcome to another video in the Iron Mining and Refining series, where today, if you hadn't already guessed, we're going to be talking about charcoal again. But don't worry, today's episode isn't going to be another one where I just talk about the pros and cons of different methods and uh, whether or not they'll work. Today, I'm actually going to be showing you how you can make good quality charcoal very efficiently and in large amounts. Because I've developed a good method that I think works best for people who are in my situation. Step one is to start a fire, just as you would normally. With one minor caveat being that you might want to pick something that's a little more bowl-shaped to start it in. Maybe a natural depression in the earth or a pre-made fire pit. You'll see why in a minute. Once the fire has built up a decent bed of coals, or at the very least is pretty much guaranteed to stay lit no matter how much you try to smother it, the next step is to get as much wood as you possibly can. Once the fire is really roaring, and it looks like, you know, this fire pit cannot hold any more wood to burn, well, you're not done yet. You're still going to keep putting wood on this fire, but before you do, you're going to hit it and press it down with something like a stick or a shovel. And you're going to keep doing this in between additions of wood. And in addition, you're going to push wood on the edge that has already had a chance to burn forward into the fire. Add wood, press down, push in. I've taken to naming this method the coal packing method because in essence what you're doing is you're taking the burning coals, which are charcoal, just a bit hot, and you're pressing them together in a way that restricts the amount of oxygen they have. So there's a mass of coals in the fire that has a large volume but low surface area. Think sphere. If the fire gets too hot or the shovel's not really pressing it down enough, you can also use the stick you're about to add to further push and jam stuff down. You really want to get this as packed down as possible. The next step is to start putting the brakes on this fire. And there are two main ways you can go about that. You can either start burning green or freshly cut wood. This has far more moisture in it, and that moisture has to escape, turn to steam, which saps a lot of heat before it'll start burning. So it's very inefficient, and at this stage of the fire, we want that inefficiency. Or, if you didn't want to burn green wood, you could burn some other greenery, like this goldenrod. Bonus points if you find something that's invasive. You're still going to be pushing the wood that's on the outside in and pressing it down, Maybe even if it's in the pit, if you didn't fill it all the way, push it into the center. As you do that, you place plants like this goldenrod on top to slow the fire down. This fire is still hot, and if I were to add more wood to this, it's still plenty hot enough to turn wood into charcoal. But the coals that form don't have enough oxygen to burn themselves. Now, once the fire gets to this point, there's going to be a lot of smoke coming off of it, which is good. It shows that the combustion is incomplete and inefficient. Bad news is, don't stand in it, and be careful because there can be a lot of carbon monoxide in that smoke due to the fact that this is inefficient combustion. Once you get to this point, fires will arise, but they'll typically tend to put themselves out but if they don't, if they start growing instead of sputtering out, just bury them or hit them with the shovel. Eventually you'll reach this point here where you'll notice there are very few actual fires, just a big pile of smoldering coals. Now on camera, it looks like this is very much still going, and it is, but if you look inside, it's completely cooled down until I give it a little oxygen, and then it'll heat right back up. Since the external coals are the only ones that are really able to burn, since they're the only ones that can get oxygen, and since we've maximized the amount of volume in relation to surface area, that means this will stay a smoldering pile of coals for quite a long time. 
And in that time, you can use these already pre-made charcoals, already hot, to ideally run your forger furnace. And what's more, this method scales really well. The more area you can commit to the bonfire that eventually results in this smoldering pile of coals, the greater the ratio of volume to surface area will be. You might think that if you leave this unattended or keep whacking it with a shovel, it's going to eventually go out. Unfortunately, that's not true. The only way you can make this go out is if you really prevented it from getting oxygen. If you do leave this, what'll happen is it'll turn into a pile of white ash. Very efficiently, I might add, so if you're looking to make some white ash for soap making or just getting some lye, this is a very efficient method of doing it because none of the ash flies away as it would in a normal bonfire. If I was to use this to heat up a forge to work metal or power a furnace to make metal, I would need to use it as is right now. If you want to save this charcoal for later, all you have to do is shovel it into a pot, like a flower pot. Make sure it's not one of the ones with the holes at the bottom. It has to be pretty sealed tight. Speaking of which, you put a lid over it. it. Doesn't have to be airtight, but just enough to reduce the amount of oxygen in there substantially. And over the course of a couple hours, the charcoal will die out and you'll be able to use it for something else. But in my opinion, this is too inefficient. It's best to just make the charcoal and use it the day of while it's still hot. And honestly, I don't see this as much of a con. This makes a lot of charcoal, and if you do it in a large enough scale, there's going to be plenty here for whatever you happen to be doing that day. You could honestly spin it as a pro, as you don't need to store the charcoal in advance, which can get kind of annoying otherwise. The other minor con that I can think of is that the charcoal size in this method is rather small. Now, if you're making steel in a bloomery furnace, this is just about the right size that you want. But if you're using these to heat up iron in a forge, it might be a little hard to get enough oxygen to these coals, given that they'll pack themselves together pretty tight on their own. It's not a perfect method. It's not a historical method. But as far as I'm concerned, it beats making charcoal in paint cans. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. Hope you guys learned something and enjoyed. See ya.